Listen, everything Google does is it follows the same pattern. It's always the same. If you were a geek and you worked at Google, their stuff is awesome. Everything they've ever made has been like that. You, know, you look at Wave. You need to be like you needed to think in like four dimensions to use Wave properly. It was beautiful, but only if you could keep track of forty-seven things at once. You know, in that case, it was awesome. But I mean, Google's always doing that. I, I don't know. I don't understand how the same people who made the simplest search engine in the world yeah. made so many That's ridiculous social tools. That's and on that note, yes. let us begin. Ed Tech oh. Weekly, 199. That's a, we're starting with a, a little dun, dun, dun. tagline today. Uh, welcome to Ed Tech Weekly. Uh, used to be a fast pace. Now it's an in-depth discussion of topics about educational technology. It's streamed live every week here on the Ed Tech Talk channel, the World Bridges Network at 2300 GMT. And if you don't know what that means, figure it out because Global <laughs> Times is part of 21st century literacy. Uh, this is Jeff Lebo in Pusan, Korea. Dave Cormier in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Jennifer Magill in Chicago, Illinois. This is John Schinker in Stowe, Ohio. And our very special guest, we're talking about Google Plus tonight. I invited a, an educator, a pioneer, a Google Plus user extraordinaire, Paul Allison. Hey, Paul. Hi. How, How are, are you? you? Great. You know him and love him from Teachers teaching teachers. Have you ever been on EdTech Weekly? A uh, long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I listen every yeah. week. Try to keep up with y'all. <laughs> so based on the careful planning that goes on in this new era of EdTech Weekly, we had to come up with our topic last week. And mm -hmm. I tossed out Google+. Plus uh, Because it was one of the biggest stories that had happened over the summer when EdTech Weekly was on hiatus. Uh, and we haven't really talked about it. Uh, and it's... It's different and uh, has some potential for education. Uh, why don't we start with just kind of people's Google Plus experiences so far. Dave, if you'd like to continue your rant, please do so. <laughs> I, 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 I think Google Plus is a very nice piece of technology. I think, uh, I think that it is, it remains, um, it follows Google's normal paradigm, uh, exclusivity being cool, um, and that kind of exclusivity is not something that really gets played out in any other successful social network. You've got a company that can play on the fact that millions and millions and millions of people depend on them for email and therefore are already connected to them, right? So mm -hmm. you get a certain number of people coming out to see whatever they're willing to do. So they've got this built-in sort of marketplace there. But realistically, it's all designed to exclude people and to categorize people, something that is possible if you work and live online all the time, but not so much something that I think is going to spread out in a broad-based way across numbers of people. You know, the whole friends and circling and stuff is way too complex a social organization for most people, I think. I don't think most people understand their, their networks in quite that way. I certainly don't see mine that way either, whereas with Twitter and I don't have to make those kinds of decisions, Google Plus seems to ask me to do all kinds of things. Um, this particular functionality of Google Plus, the people talking stuff, it's pretty good. I don't find it as stable as Skype, but it seems pretty functional. And, and we've talked about this before the show, and I'm sure somebody else will pick up the fact that part of the, the functionality here only works if you have a super phone of some kind. So I think it's beautiful in terms of technology. I think they've done some very interesting things. I don't think that it's the sort of thing that I would bring into a classroom because I can't depend on it and because it forces it's too high a barrier for entry, I think. Well, what about the idea that it was really billed, not by Google, but the press, I guess, uh, as a potential Facebook killer? I really saw it much more aligned with Twitter, at least the way people in the people I followed were using it. Again, just those broadcast messages that had the ability then to tag on additional comments easier. Um, but I really didn't see people, at least the people that I, again, were, were, was following at the, uh, at the outset, using it in the same manner you would on mm -hmm. Facebook, where it's, I don't know, tracking more of the social stuff. Again, it was more of that work-related and interest-related. I, I think that's the people using it more than uh, the tool itself. I, I think that Google Plus has a lot of features that are very similar to, to Facebook and could be used in the same way as Facebook. 
but at least in my case, and I think in most of our cases, the people that I'm connected with on Google Plus are by and large the same people I'm connected with on Twitter, and that tends to me, for me, to be more of a professional network than a personal network. So my family, my brother, uh, my friends um, are not necessarily on Google Plus. They're on Facebook, and and that's where that community is. So when I go on Plus, it's almost all people who I have a some sort of professional affiliation with. So and I think that, it. that's you, it's going to be real hard to get the moms of the world to move. <laughs> you know, once you finally got them on Facebook and following their grandkids' pictures and stuff like well, that. Well, yeah, we've talked about that okay, for years. Also, it, the best it, tool yeah. isn't the one that wins. The best tool is the one that has the critical mass of people because you go where the community is. Hmm. That said, MySpace isn't where people are anymore. They're on Facebook. So people do but migrate. people were never on MySpace. Some small subsection of the population was in MySpace. The people who went there for coolness showed up on MySpace. Do you have a MySpace account, Jeff? Sure. How many <laughs> other people do you think do that are your age? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dude, who you calling old? <laughs> <laughs> so, I got a lot of silver there arguing for me. <laughs> around the beard here. Um, I do want to go on the record as, as disagreeing with almost everything David said. Uh, with, <laughs> with the exception, I think you globally because, did that in the first show. <laughs> just in case people forget, uh, because I, I, I don't think I, I think a lot of the mistakes Google made with Wave and other stuff are, or the Google. mistakes are not happening here. Um, but uh, the invite thing, I, I totally agree with. The I don't understand the point of giving people 150 invites, but still making it invite only. Um, and they're saying it's you know a scalability issue, which maybe is, but I, you know the, the the graph has certainly stabilized, and I, I think uh, at this point it'd be nice for it to not be invite only. So what did everybody we let think Paul about it? Say there something. For, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Paul, we should stop. We're not going to ask been, for. He's been very just, polite, it's okay. and he, he doesn't. No, not polite. You got to cut people yeah. off. Man. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm, I, I'm about to say that I'm done with Twitter, for example. Um, there are many more people. Uh, I'm in many, not many more, but I've now eclipsed my Twitter followers. There are more people in, in Google circles than in Twitter followers. I'm also done with Tumblr um, because of Google+. Plus. So it's replaced those two things for me. I still use them both to kind of announce things, to let people know things. But the place where I compose, the place where I um, upload pictures, I'm also done with Flickr, I think. I don't need Flickr anymore. So for me, it's, it's killed those things. Now, whether it does industry-wide, frankly, that's, you know, the business page's problem. <laughs> but, but it works for me uh, to have a kind of united place. And, you know, we, we've used... We've used, uh, let me see, Hangouts now six, eight times for teachers teaching teachers, and it's gone down once. Um, so the stability seems to be there for me, and, you know, Skype gets down more often. Um, and also, like, there are guests who, the other point I wanted to make, there are guests who aren't on Google Plus at all uh, 15 minutes before the show, and we're able to get them on, and, and they're on. Um, so that's pretty easy to do too it seems to me so all those things are some of the reasons I, I you know I like using it <laughs> so it sounds like you use it probably more than most of us uh, any of us on the call so would if you had to describe it in a couple sentences to someone who'd never heard of it what how would you how do you describe it I mean you know it does wait fall, fall into microblogging um, what's uh, but it's but it's not short form at all. Um, I get I get responses much faster there than I do anywhere else um, to what I'm thinking. Um, so there's a lot more interaction than on any other systems I'm using. I, I, but again, I think all that's real personal. Um, I don't know how to. I I, I don't know if I answered your question though. <laughs> What well, is yeah. It you're yeah. Well, I guess, and I maybe I'm. I think we were all mm -hmm. saying kind of the same thing. It, it depends on who you use it and who you use it with. Whether you consider it more like a Twitter or more like a Facebook. And I think you said it was kind of your right off the bat. You said it was kind of your twi Twitter killer. 
um, and potentially Skype and some other things like that that you were able to integrate versus I don't think you mentioned Facebook so you probably that's yeah, probably Facebook just bores me I have lots of people there but you know <laughs> I don't know I just don't use it but um, other people do well I think some of its big virtue yeah. is the integration potential the fact that you can use it for all these different things um, mm -hmm. now when it first came out a big deal about it was the circles concept where as opposed to Facebook where everything everybody posts gets shared with everybody that they're friends with uh, Google Plus has the functionality of only sharing with certain circles and um, that reduces the stream of stuff you're not interested in. It also uh, lets you have some privacy in what you share. Now, the since that got rolled out, Facebook has added some pretty comparable functionality. I also find myself posting most of my stuff publicly uh, because most that's how I've kind of always used that stuff. If I don't assume that it's going to be public. I don't put it online for the most part. Um, Dave, you were going to say something? C circles are still critical. I, I, I mean, I think especially when you're talking about teacher-student relationships where, y you know, uh, many school districts in many states, including mine, uh, strongly frown upon friending students on, on social networks like Facebook because you are then combining your students with your college roommates and your cousins and your mom and your coworkers and you know all of these different circles of of your life, your your different personas, your different worlds that that all intersect in a world like Facebook. And uh, while you can't maintain different personas online and we've talked about that a lot in the past, that you can't pretend to be somebody else uh, or you can't have two different profiles or, or pretend to be two different people online very easily. Um, this does a, at least allow you to segment um, your contacts in, in a way that allows you to target your comments or your sharing to the groups that you intend them for. That said, I still wouldn't post anything anywhere on the internet that I didn't expect to be public <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Great. Right, so that last that you got, the circles, I you know, I also they may be critical, but I immediately make everybody public and don't don't even have any private circles. So mm. and and same with Facebook. I make everything in Facebook public to everybody. Every every option that's public, I make it public immediately because because I believe in being discreet. Per, you know, in myself, and whatever goes out online should go out online. And you and, have been you know, very so, friendly, I mean, Paul. And I teach kids that too. Yeah. Whenever I'm finding someone new on Google Plus, and I look at the f people we have in common in our circles, you're always there. Like for anyone. It's because I go on yours and no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Paul has circled everybody in Google Plus. So, so. I don't know. You know, it's a broadcast system. It's, it's as far as I'm concerned. So how do you see it in, in your classroom then, um, Paul? How do you see bringing kids well, into it? Google Plus is blocked, and my kids are younger than 18, uh, so that's not happening yet. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's a quick answer. Yeah. But, is Google um, Plus 18 under? 18 yeah. over. Is, is it? I did not know that. Mm. And and Google Apps, which our school uses, uh, is not open yet to profiles either. Although they say they will, once I do that, I guess it'll be open to younger than eighteen. But, so, so let's assume for a second that we can get past that barrier. Let's assume that mm -hmm. uh, the magical fairy waves the pixie dust or whatever happens, and we can get through there. And let's assume that to take the sort of meme that we started last time, in that okay, I have my reservations about it, but let's say that Jeff tomorrow has to go bring this into his classroom. And let's say that Jeff teaches fourteen-year-olds. Um, how do what what advice would we give somebody who was going to have to go in Monday morning and actually create some kind of thing on Google Plus and get it to work inside their classroom? So what would we what would be a, what would be our advice for that person? And given what we know about the technology, given our experience running crazy projects with people, um, what would we tell that person to do given this particular specific technology? Paul. I was gonna say, let's defer to Paul. If I had to teach fourteen years old, fourteen year olds, I would quit the job the next day before I check them into any social networking site. I, 
I, I, I, you know, I'm going to answer very personally, but and uh, sorry, the um, Youth Voices is what I would recommend to people. Honestly, um, I don't. I would not recommend that you use a network like this, that's public like this. Although Youth Voices is totally public too, and kids post immediately on it, but it's managed and and watched by a, a, you know a, a social a, a group of of teachers, and um, I would not want to use a site that I could not administer and by that I mean go out go in and take the first sentence off that says you know F you and then the rest of it's wonderful you know I, I want to be able to go in and edit I want to be able to go in and take manage uh, what students produce and I can't see doing that on a network like this so that's that's one answer. <laughs> I think that may be part of the sticking point with enabling profiles and why they're reluctant mm -hmm. to do it, that there are those sorts of tools that I think people would want to have to administer, in, especially in apps for education, perhaps not as much in apps for business. Although, you know, as an apps for, or apps for education administrator, I do have, you know, I can check people's email, right? I can, I can mm -hmm. go into Postini and see what kind of email they're sending and receiving, and you sort of have that big brother... Or, uh, view of what's going on on the network uh, or on the service, and mm -hmm. um, I think that that would that would be something that people would expect to have, but also something that that people would be concerned about. And you know, what kind of access do the administrators have on these supposedly private interactions? Um, I think my response for you know we're going to go in and, and implement this on Tuesday uh, is that it's a backwards kind of question, and and I've been trying to fight that in my own school district, that idea of we're going to take this solution and go in and apply it to uh, whatever problem we happen to have or whatever we're trying to teach this week, but we know the Google Plus is the way to teach it, just like we know that you know iPads are the way to, to uh, do intervention because they exist and, and we're excited about them. So I guess I would start with what are our instructional objectives, what are we trying to get out of this, and then is this the best tool? Um, and then go on but you know it doesn't that. always work out that way. <laughs> it never works out Fair that enough. way, but we, we guys want it to work out that way. You safe answer. Of course, a bad idea. But let's assume you had to anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, Google Plus is not the all-inclusive learning management system that you're going to use to run your class. I see it as another tool in the tool belt. I see it as a way to easily uh, facilitate class conversations. Uh, just have everyone create a class circle and there you go and it's a great way for students to go out to the internet and follow you know I would come up with a recommended list of people that they put in their circle that you know uh, post mm -hmm. things about our topic of, of interest um, you know I, I do like some of the little functionality the things like editing posts I think that's awesome um, but in terms of classroom usage I, I don't see I mean the other nice thing is that you have the integration of other stuff so if people are I would say make a Google presentation and post that or it's it's a, a good publishing platform but not a learning management system. I'll so play, students I'll using it to build their own. I'll play with Go Dave. Go on. Go on. <laughs> I feel bad. No, nobody's playing with Dave. He had a, that's a question. I'll take you seriously. I think um, that what we're doing right here could be very cool to have office hours for mm -hmm. the teacher and to have um, small group interactions where you don't have to fire up um, Adobe Connect or pay for Adobe Connect or whatever that might be. Um, I think that right there is a pretty big deal. Not that there aren't other tools, you can't do it. And then Matt's actually bringing up something that's interesting. We don't know what will be um, come of it, but once this is rolled into Apps for Education, that may address some of the things we're talking about as far as being able to lock it down. But I. Um, I, I work again uh, with more of an uh, older group of people and um, so I don't have necessarily the 18 and under issues that you, you'd have but I think also people and here I am so big on open and we're doing a webcast that's broadcast to the world but I think in an educational setting people still get weirded out with their stuff being out there for the world to hear and so that, that part of it I think I'd still try to keep it a fairly contained group until everybody got pretty comfortable with it and then slowly build in some of the features um, <coughs> that would um, allow them to, to reach a greater audience but that's that's just kind of my evolution I guess on the web Can start I answer small my own and build question? out please do well I've been listening to you, all of your very positive commentary 
and uh, thinking as <clears throat> I have come in being the negative one and you guys were positive and then when I asked the question you all said except for Jen that you didn't want to so I'm a little confused um, <laughs> but f for me I think uh, particularly if you've got the technology if you've got the money to have the technology where Google Plus could be really awesome is with mashups because you can send it anything and it'll just go boom. That's true. Right? Like mm -hmm. if you look at, have you, you guys ever played with Google Plus on an Android? Mm -hmm. like, well, just mm -hmm. yeah. actually with it's, you guys. It's yeah. essentially a native app, right? It just, it just works perfectly on it. So, I mean, you can throw Android on almost anything. So, if you take it from that perspective and you assume that you want to have people playing with different videos and audios and pictures and whatever and just firing it back at Google Plus and you have sort of a mashup group. So if you take uh, kids on a scavenger hunt, you know, you could have stuff coming back. To, I mean, I, I did a, a project with my, my teachers um, so last summer where they had to go out and each part of a group had to go out and collect stuff for a presentation, but they had to be able to talk about it go out, decide for themselves what they would do, and then bring it back because they didn't know what they would find when they left the room. So I was trying to set up the, the group work so that each person had to go out and make their own decisions and come up with their own ideas and then bring it back to the group. But we had a really hard time because they had video cameras and cameras and all kinds of stuff, a really hard time blending it back together so that everybody could see what everybody else had done because it was always like an interface problem and people were plugging stuff together and there's cables all over the place and people like some people are drawing stuff but with Google Plus it'll just take stuff you know you can send it a picture of the video or take a picture it really really nice that way so to me for any exercise that involves that kind of mashup work I think Google Plus would be really nice there's my positive thing I said about Google do you, Plus. Nice. You do you think nice. Do you think Google Plus has an advantage over something like an LMS because it's not closed, in the sense oh, that yeah, exactly. you can encourage yeah, students yeah, yeah. to create their own learning networks that That's right. extend beyond the the limits of whatever course they they happen to be in, and the follow up to that then is, do we want to discourage them from doing that with in apps for education, for example, where they're going to lose their access to that account when they leave the institution? Should they be doing this out well, of the the big a lot wide of public world? A lot of institutions, particularly institutions of higher education, are not closing people's access to those Google accounts. So because they've moved to the Google platform and the overhead isn't as tedious, um, uh, a lot of people are starting to just, once you have an, it's an account for life, mm -hmm. right? So that it becomes less a problem for that. So I've had um, my students actually do their learning plan inside of it. And my idea of a learning plan is that a learning plan is something you develop while you're in my course, but it's a plan for after the course is over thinking that when you're in a course trying to figure stuff out, everything's obvious because it's right there and you're like, oh yeah, it's going to be fine, but really it takes a while before the learning kind of sinks in, so you develop this plan to go on past it. And we did all of that inside of Google Apps thinking that one, they could make it public if they wanted to, which is kind of nice, and two, it was something that gave them that personal space that, that I think Jen was talking about, um, and yet gives them the chance to publish and also will stay with them because they don't lose their accounts at my university. Yeah, yeah really, we need a way to migrate them. Um, you know, in our case, we do cut them off and we remove their accounts after they're gone, but it would be nice if they had a way to take that and transition it to a regular Google account. Yes. Yeah, John, what did you and I play with uh, at first on Google Plus? Remember we there was that export feature? I haven't done it for three months or played with it. Remember, we, there was yeah, that you can nice export your data from Google Plus, and and that would be a concern, especially with what Dave's talking about in terms of using it as a mashup and putting all of your stuff in it. You know, you, the other side of that is you have to be able in in any online tool to be able to take your your ball and go home, and and that it is I want my data, give me my data in a format that I can use it, and you know, data liberation front is part of that, and and being able to export your data from Google Plus, as are most of the, the Google tools are pretty good about letting you take yourself out when you want to. Yeah, we're getting good suggestions in the chat room. Um, I wish Matt would grab a headset. He, I, I checked with him, he's on yeah. baby duty. 
Oh, uh, he's on baby duty. Gotcha. Matt Montaigne is talking about migrating Google Apps accounts and being able to, to take individual uh, applications and, and transfer those over to regular Google accounts and uh, lots of good comments in there. When you guys are so, talking about like keeping their accounts, does the institution have to pay anything for that? No. No. Although, no. yeah, right, not yet. Um, in our case, there's also concern that you know they have a, an email address on our domain. And so they are, in some respect, speaking for the institution, even if they have no connection is, to us anymore. That's ridiculous. That's crazy talk. I've heard that argument, too. That's a crazy talk argument. The idea that somehow I believe that anybody who has an email address from a domain is somehow speaking. Every 18-year-old who signs up to go to the University of Phoenix is somehow speaking for the University of Phoenix. Or so that Dave is speaking for Google. Another good example. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I mean, I've got a, I've got an issue right now where I'm looking at Google Plus and I'm thinking, I don't know. I just, I'm not sure it does for me what Skype does. Um, so I'll bring, I'll leave it to you. This is a real honest to goodness situation. Do you guys know about my ebook project? Mm -hmm. Yes, just I what do. I saw on Twitter. Please explain. I watched the video. So, yeah, watched. You watched the video. I did all two minutes wow. and fifty seven seconds. I've I've noticed that Jeff doesn't read the blog post, but occasionally he will watch the videos. <laughs> if you put it in video, <laughs> he'll watch that. Uh, so um, we're we've got a MOOC starting up uh, tomorrow, and um, it's going on for thirty five weeks. And my one of my frustrations from these MOOCs is that there's not a there's no artifact as part of the process. Um, and I finally come up with a metaphor that I like. Uh, Annie Annie DeFranco has an expression from has a piece from one of her songs where we say, she says a record is the record of an event of people singing together and it's not that in listening to a record you don't wish you had been there but there's great value to recording the event and, and, and that's the way I'm thinking of this ebook what I'm trying to do is figure out how to record the event of the MOOC so that people can use it in ways that they want to later without it being scattered across the web because it it happens and it's scatteredness is part of the beauty of it but then you can't do anything with it after you can't find it you can't so you don't want to people have always controlled things at the beginning so that you can track the content and what I'm trying to do is say no 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 leave it be scattered we'll try to curate as you go along and leave you with a separate kind of artifact that adds maybe to the process so I have, uh, I don't know, 16, 17 volunteers so far who are going to work with me, ostensibly, claim they're going to work with me. Uh, they don't know what they're in for. Um, over the next 35 weeks to curate the process and create chapters per week to create an ebook, one to release at Christmas and one to release at the end of the course. So we've got a wiki. I've used media wiki, of all things. If you want bold, do mm. asterisk. Asterisk. <laughs> Yeah, I awesome. know. Or it's so much easier than clicking on that like little that. B icon. Yeah, I know. It does have the B icon now, though. Um, <laughs> so, so we're using MediaWiki for reasons that every time I only Dave it, I understands. <laughs> yeah, well, there did it you is. consider Google Docs at all? No. Um, the problem with Google Docs is that as you start, as pages start to expand, it just gets stupid. Like it goes all over the place. I find my Google Docs is absolutely incomprehensible at this point. It's only good for searchability. It doesn't give you a structure that people can look at and understand. And I want it I want the wiki to serve the same process during the course that the ebook will serve at the How end. How many pages do you envision on this ebook? The ebook itself or yeah. will be a few hundred anyway. Right. Doesn't it depends on the size of the text, Jeff. Text is dead. Well, I'm just—I mean, if there was one page for each chapter, uh, then a Google well, Doc might work. Each, you want each of the presenters is writing a 500 to 1,000 word piece, so there's that to start with. Plus, what we're doing is um, we're trying to set up a process for curating links during each week, so there'll be those, a description of those, bio, like the whole thing, right? So, and we're also hoping to get some kind of written response for the week as well. Um, I don't know how that's going to work, but whatever. There's lots of details so basically, I don't understand at this point. Basically, each week is a chapter. Each week is a chapter, and that's going to be, well, it may be only one e-page, 
but if you think of it in, in text per page size, it's going to be a lot more than one. Um, so I need uh, the media wiki is working. There's a work list there. People have picked up jobs and have started doing them, um, and and that's fine. It's at change11.info, uh, and anybody who wants to join in, by all means, come along for the ride. Uh, you just have to email me or DM me your email address so that I can uh, add you. I've decided not to let people register because security on a media wiki. So this way I get to make sure that you know people get registered by me and then I know that we're not getting spammed to death. Um, so I need to communicate with these people occasionally. We have Big Blue Button as part of the course. Um, we have stuff like Google Hangout, we have uh, Skype. What do I do past communicating on the wiki to get together and talk to these people and, and organize ourselves over 35 weeks? Is Google Plus really an option? Is the Hangout really an option? Or are my concerns about not enough people being on it or it being too heavy sort of impediments to that? What do you think? Well, what about using Google Plus as almost like a discussion board? Or is that silly because usually on a wiki you can also How would it work as a discussion like board? I don't know. I was just thinking Wouldn't if you had... Wouldn't it just get lost in people's streams? Yeah. And in, yeah, with it not know. being searchable and not really taggable, I think that would be a problem. So then the we're kind of saying the, the asynchronous to... piece is not a piece you'd be interested in then, right? If you're like kind of well, taking it... I, 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 first of all, my concerns would not be, like being heavy is not a concern. As okay. far as what I would do, I would say, okay, if you want to participate in this part of it, uh, here's the list of people who are part of this group. They're G, uh, G plus profiles. Create a circle called Change Ebook, and you're going to have that on the side. And yes, it you know the stream does flow by, but just click on your um, Change Ebook circle and you'll get a nice little list, which is another little tweak that makes a big difference for me is, uh, what is it, the extension Super G Plus or something? So that when I look at my Google Plus, I'm not seeing this whole long expanded stream, I'm seeing a list stream. And as I mouse over, I see the expanded post, which mm -hmm. makes a huge difference for me in terms of being able to consume the stream. What do you think, Paul? We'll leave you some room here to talk. <laughs> uh, Jeff's suggestions sound good. I mean, people can set up a circle. You, they just the, the the odd thing is every everybody needs to set up their own circle, and then they yeah, can follow the conversation. Um, That's a good point. Is that hard to explain to people who aren't familiar with it how to do? I mean, are those types of logistics when you set up a I group. It, like if it, they can't figure it out, it you don't want them in there. I think it leads you through pretty well as you're setting yeah, up Google Plus. Um. Is it possible to create a spark for something like this group or this topic so that all of that stuff gets so. collected together? No. You know, know, the EdTech Talk host no. chat has been working for how many years now? Yeah. That's what I was it just about works. to say. It just works. It really, and you just really add works. someone and they're in there. You don't have to say, okay, make sure you've got Paul and John and then Dave and then don't forget, you know, it's like, it just seems so backwards to have everybody reset up their circles every time but you the, want to set up. Well, but the problem with the Tech Talk host chat is you've got to be running Skype to do it, and we're not using Skype anymore. I mean, that's the only reason I have Skype installed on my work machine is so I can keep up with the text chat. And one of the nice things, let's say there's someone in that group chat who gets a little chatty, and so uh, you can you know, give up on following it because... A couple of people decide to have this long personal chat within the group chat. What are you trying to say, John? Jeff? <laughs> John, do you and I resemble that comment? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I don't know that what Jeff, about Jeff just ignores the whole thing, doesn't he? <laughs> that, well, unless you like, you know, start talking about a webcast or something. Um, <laughs> but that whole that whole Not tangent likely. becomes just one little thread of that conversation that's easily ignored. Uh, and if someone you really drives you nuts with their chat, you can always uncircle them. Functionality. Or you can just close Skype. Problem solved. <laughs> or close Skype. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know. I'm still hung up on this whole you got to make everybody sign up for the same group of people. It seems I awful see heavy being... to me. I agree with you, Jen. It just, when I think of, you know, of the people who are joining the group to do this, two, maybe three of them, are going to think of this as something that's important, that it's something that's going to be really fun. 
there's going to be another 10 or 11 that are going to be willing to work on it whenever you know they think about it and there's going to be five or six of the group that are signed up now who probably signed up and will probably not do anything just from my experience in doing this stuff well why don't you try and, it and let us know how it goes <laughs> Dude. Only one way to find out. We need some empirical data. I I think it's a, just a du I wouldn't do it. I you know I, I'm thinking that I talk to the same 25 people on Google Plus all the time, even though there are you know two, oh, over 2,000 people who I'm in their circles. But I still talk to the same 25 people, and it happens through the notifications. Um, you know, I, it's so that's an important piece of it. So I'm I, I'm thinking that if if you have a group of people who are working on a project together, it it, it kind of they'll find each other kind of naturally on Google Plus. I don't I don't think hmm. being in the stream is really an issue. Because the fun the, the and it's the almost like getting make, an email. Yeah. Right. The last point I'll make, if Jeff doesn't interrupt me this time, is that these people don't currently know each other, and that's my biggest concern in trying to pull them together. It's not me and my 10 buddies who are going to go and do this now. It's 17 people of who are 15 people of whom maybe three or four of them know anybody else. Right? They're just random people from the internet. I know so two of them. You're, you're collecting them on this wiki page, right? I mean, that's where They're you're all, organizing this and collecting it. Yeah. And so you have to let them decide what the best tool is for them to communicate with one another and get this this work done. It's not about you as a facilitator saying, hey, here's the tool that we're going to use to organize this. You've already done that by saying we're going to jump into MediaWiki and, and use this tool to organize our stuff. Then from there, wherever they need to coordinate with one another, they'll use whatever tool's most relevant for them. I do like the idea, um, kind of what I was going at before, the whole asynchronous versus synchronous, using a tool like this, if possible. If even you can get the schedules together, it sounds like you probably have people in all kinds of different time zones, and yeah. that may be an issue of its own. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I don't know. I just, I'm not, and again, I don't think the discussion feature within MediaWiki may be the way to go, but it is kind of nice to have an asynchronous static place to go and post ideas. If, if these are ideas that you want to maintain, and not have just fall off a screen once more comments are posted. Um, you got to kind of think about what it is you want people to talk about and how long you want to be able to follow what they said. I would like to raise a couple other points of functionality that I quite like that have potential. One is the plus one. Uh, these days when you go to a lot of web pages you have a little plus one button and in your Google Plus profile if you click profile you have a little tab for plus ones and this kind of has a social bookmarking functionality potential as well because you can go surfing around the internet and as you plus one something you don't have to bookmark it it's in your Google Plus profile which can be shared I would love to introduce tagging into this I was going to say, last time I checked the tagging, I, either I didn't understand it or it wasn't there. Is it is it there? I don't think it's there. Okay. Uh, but you've got to think, you know, they're going to be hopefully flushing this out a little bit uh, so that that would be nice. And these days I get kind of annoyed when there's no plus one bop one plus one button on sites. I, there was this great article, 34 guides to using uh, Google Plus, and you couldn't plus one it. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there, is a, there is a Chrome extension. You can plus one any, any page, by the way. So you should yeah, add that's that. a good question, Paul. Um, I don't use Chrome because I tend to use Zotero a lot, which is a Facebook tool, and yeah. so I tend to be at Facebook. So do you think that is, um, well, maybe it's hard for you to say because you're on Chrome all the time, but would you encourage people to migrate to Chrome to be able to use some of the features? Because I think that thing you mentioned, Jeff, what was it, the super or whatever that thing mm -hmm. was? You have to be in Chrome to do that, don't you? Yes. Yeah, so maybe some there of the seem to be cool there seem to be are. features happening faster on Chrome than Firefox at this point. Perhaps, yeah, I guess Makes that's sense. why I moved to Chrome this summer. But I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't download it on my computers at school; it, it, it was blocked. But I could download Firefox, so I'm using Firefox there. Um, can I? You know, I I wanted to try to get back to that that question a long time ago about the fourteen year olds. 
Because <laughs> <'cause, Okay. laughs> here, because here, they've grown up now. They, cause I, cause, uh, <laughs> really I'm sure they have. They're now eighteen. Here's, Don't worry here's, about cause, it. Because I think I want to twist the question around, and I want to I want to say to the teacher, um, where are your students doing what I want to call connected learning? And I'll break that out a little bit um, in your classroom, right? Not like, not like the teacher coming to you. I want to come to the teacher and say, where are you doing connected learning? And by connected learning, and, and I'll get to something that I, that I think happens for me on, on Google+, and I'm not sure why, and it hasn't happened in other places. Um, it's, it's, it's an attempt to have a, a relatively intimate converse, conversation with some people I know but do that in public so that people can keep interrupting it and add to the conversation as we go. Um, and that's, that's, what I, that's what I find happens on Google+. Um, I, it is the same 25 people who, who I'm always sort of reading everything they say and they're reading everything I say. But at the same time, every once in a while, there's this person from left field who comes in and I've never met them and they have a lot to offer. So I think that's what we're seeking in all this stuff. We're seeking intimacy in public, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, if I'm allowed to say that. Um, so, and and the reason I the reason we've worked so hard on youth voices is is we've tried to create a public space where kids can do that too, where they can they can be known and know each other. Um, but also it be public and instead of trying to use uh, Google Plus right away or, or Twitter right away I think we're teaching kids what to do once they get to those sites right so I think we need a place that we can manage that we can can watch over better um, so that when they go out on those other sites there there's more civil more thoughtful more intellectual discourse happening there than normally happens with kids. I said a lot there, though. Did that make any sense? Or? I don't know. Well, well, some of the things that I took away from, from what you were saying, too, is, um, and I'm kind of reading, um, or adding to it maybe, is the Please. idea when you take kids in, and again, I don't work with kids, so you can tell me I'm totally stupid, but um, when you take them in, you do have more of a responsibility maybe than you would with adults not only just to protect them, but just to help them, uh, you know, understand how to use the tool because you're like you're saying, they could start tossing up out a bunch of F-bombs or whatever it might be. <laughs> and so there's kind of that layer of um, um, helping them understand how to use the tool and then the next part of it is actually them using the tool. And so do you think a tool using Google Plus is harder because it's a little bit more free form? And you've already mentioned the one example, you can't edit their posts, but they could start friending or circling or whatever it may be, all kinds of other people that you wouldn't even know about. And would that be something you'd be concerned about? If being the one, you're the one bringing them and introducing them to this new area. Or is that not a big deal? Yeah, I mean, that's why I wouldn't use it, but but I hope they use it at home. And I hope they're they're smarter in how they use it at home because of, of what we're doing in class, if that makes sense. But, um, um, and and the very quick example of connected learning, you know, I did I tried to do some some um, exploration into uh, what was going on in the Horn of Africa this summer, and put up some early questions and use Spark to to find things and still use Spark to find things, um, and so I was kind of really public about my questions and my reading, and there was a librarian who hooked me up with you know a, a um, an anthropologist who who then came on our show. Um, so it's that kind of finding people and finding people that I want students to do too. Um, so whatever, <laughs> and, and I want them to be learning how they're, they're, they're inter interacting with each other and talking to each other. So I, I also wanted the kind of question learning management systems. Like I don't think Youth Voices is a learning management system. There aren't classes on there. I really do think it is more like a social network um, for young people to learn how to use a social network to learn. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit more about Sparks and how you use them for professional development, how that might be used as a... Professional part? development? <laughs> or, 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 or just how you've used Sparks. <laughs> My own learning. Is, yes. Yeah, I guess that's what it is, yeah. So. 
you know, I mean, they're not great because the, they're, 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 you know, I, I don't know who creates them, but I, but I find funky things in there. Um, so I've just, if, if it's a current issue like Somalia or um, Horn of Africa, it's, uh, it's, it's been a useful way to just sift through and find things quickly. I, I haven't. I mean, it's really just like tuning then, you know, into a particular search term, right? Say it again. What, what is a Spark? Can you tell us what a Spark is? No, it's more like it's. I think it's more like uh, you know Google Reader simplified. If uh, and and but you have no control <laughs> over what ends up there, so no it's kind of weird that yeah. way. But, but there is some serendipity that happens because of that. I think you know I find things I might not otherwise have found. Um, so. So how are you um, using any type of search search functionality, like searching, like I'm equating it to Twitter, where you search hashtags or something like that? What what's kind of been the way people are doing that in Plus? Again, there is an extension that does that um, on on Chrome that'll mm -hmm. help you find whatever you need in Google Plus. I don't know why they're not searching it yet, but that extension tends to work. Okay, so that's what you'd point point yeah. people to more than anything else. Okay. Yeah, I mean it is kind of half baked in ways, and and mm -hmm. that's where it's supposed to be. And but kind of surprising, there's no search for a Google tool. It, well, <laughs> yeah, they've talked about it a lot on this week in Google, uh, which is uh, one of the Twit podcasts. And I think the consensus there is that they're looking for a good search company to partner with before they introduce it. <laughs> <laughs> um, John is already talking about next week's topic, so perhaps we should head into the home stretch here. One little other functionality thing I wanted to mention was the huddle which is a really nice mobile component where you can have basically a group chat on your smartphones, but it's missing that web integration. If that can be tossed into the web as well, that's really nice. Because you know you were saying our group Skype chats have worked well for years. If you add the, m the people on mobile can chime in as well, that's pretty sweet. Mm. But unfortunately, it's currently not. You can't do. You can't be on a laptop and uh, um, and communicate with someone who started the huddle. Right? Yeah. No web-based huddling. Right. No web. No web-based huddling, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, and I wanted to mention that one of the things, rather than just looking at our our heads here, on the last show, Monica Hardy pulled out her laptop and went downstairs and showed us what was on the wall of her classroom. Um, so detaching these webcams from the computers might be uh, an interesting thing that could happen on these Hangouts mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. I don't exactly know what that means. I guess it means what you're saying, somehow making them mobile, but yeah. Yeah, I don't even know. On a huddle, that's just, is that pure text chat? Can you, at this point on a huddle, or no, what do you call it? I get the two mixed up. Huddle's what you do on the phone, right? Yep. That, is that just text chat? Well, that's yeah. all we've used it for. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so they also do it in football, by the way. Because... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. In the in the Google Plus context, I think it's just text. So I don't know if we Which have any just... other Google Plus stuff to talk about. Uh, before we wrap, I'd love to get a little teachers teaching teachers update because there have been some changes there, and perhaps a little change <laughs> preview from uh, Dave. But any other Google Plus thoughts? <laughs> What do you think? I mean, let's no. just uh, just a kind of a personal opinion. Uh, it sounds like Paul's using it a lot. I use it. I hardly use Twitter, and I use this much less. So for me, a curiosity. <laughs> I'll leave uh, it. I'm not using it very much. I, I really haven't really engaged with the people who are in circles. I'm still kind of stuck on Twitter and and using that, I guess, more than I'm using Plus. Um, Though honestly, I'm not using Twitter all that much either lately. So, you know, it could just be beginning of school year stuff with other other things taking precedence. But I'm really I haven't been engaged yet. I'm using everything. You know, it, it hasn't replaced Facebook as much as I would love it to. I mean, for because that's still where family and friends are, and it's still where people are talking about the party last night or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm. I'm a gray-haired party guy, uh, uh, and Twitter. I still feel compelled, and there are you know there are extensions and add-ons you can add to tweet as well. I still tweet as much as ever. 
<laughs> and you blog uh, as much as ever too. It hasn't changed your time. Hey, I, I, my blog post has the whole discussion on it from last week. I think I have eight comments on my blog post. Ooh, I've comments. been waiting to say that in a show for about eight, five years. <laughs> um, so, and I, you know, I, I don't, I haven't been paying that much attention to Google Plus as I did those first few weeks, but I'm still, I'm still keeping an eye on it, and I'm still hopeful. I still think it's, it's heading in the right direction and has a lot of utility. I, I, I don't know if you mentioned this at the top, but. Just not being limited to the number of characters is is wonderful. I think I got to say, you know, I I ha, you know I I've seen all of the people claiming there's utility in that. I haven't seen it, um, and and everything I put on Google Plus gets broadcast. I know people don't love this, but gets put up on my Twitter. So using the RSS feeds from Google Plus. So you know, that's I'm actually publishing more on Twitter because I'm using Google Plus. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Um, uh, so, so not being limited to 140 characters, and and also the ability to have um, what's it called embedded discussions underneath each, um, I find really useful. Um, so, those are, those are the actually the main two reasons I like Google Plus better than the other services. But Dave's been very quiet personal. for quite a while. <laughs> Taking it all. In. His microphone must have stopped working. <laughs> So what's on deck for your deal? Tell us your change deal. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I I wish you hadn't asked me. Um, the reason being, I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name for this week. Uh, his name is Zoraini Wati Abbas, maybe. Um, he is going to do mobile right. learning. He's from the university, uh, the Open University of Malaysia. That sounds um, cool. So yeah, so um, uh -huh. was, he's the first presenter for Change Eleven. And uh, yeah, it, it looks pretty interesting so far. What does it mean to be you a know? presenter? I'm sorry. What does it mean to be a presenter? What kind of presentations? Where and when? Oh, you know, they're going to happen. Um, <laughs> it's um, <laughs> he is guiding the discussion this week. We got his material about five hours ago, uh, which was not as early as we'd hoped, but we've been expecting that this is pretty much going to be the. The standard, so it it does make it a bit, a bit awkward to try to organize stuff when you don't know what's going to be happening. You should so, be used to that. I mean, yeah. yeah well, I certainly am. <laughs> um, I I don't know if the people taking the course are, but um, you know, you get what you pay for, right? Um, <laughs> so he's uh, he's going to start um, this week. We've got a presentation on Wednesday. I don't have a time yet. We're sort of relying on the fact that most people are going to be tracking the times and dates and stuff live, so and are going to organize accordingly. And that most people's lives really aren't that flexible anyway. So, if you knew today or tomorrow or the next day that it was two o'clock on Wednesday, you're either really free or not free. Um, and I think that's kind of the way it works out. I mean, we have, well, I don't know, how many people do we have registered? We have a lot of people registered for the course. What platform or tool? Will you be using for the live stuff? It's pretty light. Um, the majority of the work is being done by Grasshopper, which is um, Stephen's um, homegrown tool, which uh, mainly is a newsletter and a harvester. Uh, we're using Big Blue Button for uh, live events. We have no idea what happens when 100 people log in the Big Blue Button. <laughs> Did they add recording? Yet? I don't know anybody who does. You so. Know. We'll find out. Um, after that, it's just distributed stuff, right? It's people's Twitter accounts and, and the rest of that stuff. So I don't know. We have 1,670 people registered. So how's um, Big Blue Button doing? Awesome. Yeah, you mentioned What's that, and I, that's a good question. Big Blue Button. We haven't talked about that in a year or so. And you just said you would mentioned it earlier. They just released the beta of 8, which has recording on it. Get out of town! They did. They did. Hence our choice of it as a platform. So uh, I'm going to know an awful lot more about it in about five days. Um, I, I hope it's going to work out. Uh, I, I, I've talked to the guys at that company, what, year or two ago, and they seemed really interesting, and, and there's some really interesting ideas. So, um, And it's... It actually open source in ways that Dim Dim never was, 
Um, mm -hmm. Steven's already he's he's had it set up for about five days and he's already integrated it with Grasshopper um, because the APIs are just that obvious. You know what I mean? So, and I must say, work out. you you guys mook well. Uh, I find this is a much uh, more engaging MOOC to to be part of uh, than past well Pat Edu MOOC <laughs> I should say I mean the the subscriptions uh, the, the newsletter is a great way to kind of it's curated a little bit and it it keeps us up to date. You no, know, it's one of those things that when I first the newsletter thing first started, I was like, this is the dumbest idea. And the research has been done on it. We've asked people about it, and consistently. The thing that holds it together is the newsletter. And the fact that, that you guys are engaged and you're putting stuff out there. You each made your little introduction video. Yeah. You made the um, ebook video. There's, yeah. there's, it's, you know, it's distributed, but it's not totally, okay, go learn. You get to yeah. get point and, somewhere. Presence. And that sounds a lot like instructional design, Dave. Did you guys design Well, you know what? You can, you can say... Bye. Being around makes things work better, and call that instructional design if you want. Or you could call it life. No, you um, made definite decisions geared but, toward I mean, persistent presence. Experience. There's no doubt that persistent presence is key to everything. Um, if you've ever raised kids, you know that persistent presence is everything. Um, it, it's it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're not there, it's not going to happen, right? And, and the MOOC's no different than anything else. And, and realistically, the difference between the MOOC, a MOOC, any MOOC, and the internet is pretty subtle, right? Um, for some people, Scott Wesley <clears throat> would claim that a MOOC is just an exercise in branding. Really, all we're doing is saying, oh, there's all this stuff out here. Come look at it through us, right? I think it's a little different than that. I think that it's, um, do you guys, are any of you guys from a small town? <laughs> yeah. You okay, do you know how in a small town people drive up and down the road looking for something to do over and over and over again yeah. until one group of people stop and then everybody goes, oh, that's where the party is and then everybody goes there? So I kind of think of a MOOC move. that way. We're all kind of running around the internet and then somebody stops and goes, hey, I want to talk about this over here and then says, no, 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 everybody can come. And that's really all it is that we're doing, is trying to structure a conversation and say, okay, over here, we're going to talk about this thing. So it uses, hopefully, it does all the good things the internet does, but it's, it's stopping long enough for us to actually talk about anything. I found the Plank experience really, really useful for me to sort of sort out my ideas about how I felt about PLDs and PLNs and all that stuff. Not really the main focus of any of my work, but something I'd always meant to put some time into. And I found the MOOC really helpful to structure that for me. And I hope this will be for people as well. Speaking of which, I pulled the car over on Wednesdays at 1400 GMT, figure it out, uh, for CoolCast. <laughs> uh, I've been doing a weekly webcast here on Ed's is that Talk. Is that Kook? No, cool. Collaborative <laughs> oh, I thought Open it was Online Kook. Learning. Okay, okay. Just, just checking. Uh, which Stephen Downs did not like the name because MOOCs are not collaborative, they're cooperative, and <laughs> I am wrong, and Google is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and it, my favorite part is he called us an underground webcast. I love being an underground webcast here from the 41st floor, <laughs> tweeting it out everywhere. But um, yeah, so CoolCast happens then. And talking about MOOC stuff just as a place to kind of uh, process what's going on, but also how people can bring the open and online component to their own teaching. So my plug is over. Ta -da. Ta -da. Speaking of plugs, would love to get an update on Teachers Teaching Teachers. Every Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. <laughs> um, Figure it yes. out. No, figure it out. Yeah, figure it out. <laughs> no, that's all right. You know, um, and uh, uh, if you've been listening recently, you've noticed that Susan Ettenheim has taken a sort of a back seat, um, hoping that she'll be encouraged to come back in the chat room for a while at least. Um, and uh, so, anyway, we're still working with her on Youth Voices. Uh, I, I would rather give the plug to Youth Voices at this point, um, but but absolutely, um, that's one of the things we do on Teachers Teaching Teachers is keep track of each other there. 
Um, and seeking another co-host, so there, there are quite a few other ideas out there. Um, I reached out to Monica Hardy because uh, I thought she was kind of different than me, so I was looking for difference. I remember John Cage's notion that uh, <laughs> people should marry each other who are uh, of totally different religions. Um, <laughs> And anyway, um, so that's why I reached out to her. I don't know if that's going to work out. She doesn't know if it's going to work out. We're kind of working through things. That's fun. So that's uh, that's where we are. Can she um, do a sound check? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it, it's been a ch listen. We've been on we've been on these hangouts, and she got a light bulb uh, the last time. <laughs> She's uh, been in the dark some of it. Anyway, and, and you're streaming she, now, right, Paul? Uh, we're not, uh, are we streaming at who, all? We're who does the streaming on your show? We don't stream. We're, we're just on, uh, we're just on live here. We, we just use, um, live stream. Sorry. Oh, that, so that's I guess streaming. I do the streaming. I do the streaming. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what an excellent example. Because, Other people could follow your footsteps. It's not that hard. Yeah. Yeah. John, we resemble uh, that comment again, too. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, Paul also never misses a week, you know. <laughs> the rest of us take the summer off. Paul's there every week yeah, talking about yeah. what's going on in the world. He's he's on top of this all the time. And well, I really I have a tremendous that. amount of admiration for his dedication to this network because he doesn't say a lot in, in the back channels and, and talk a lot about <laughs> what he does, but he just comes out and does it does every it. single week. And, and that's just yeah. amazing. Quick Whether thing, you can stream one, or not. One of the, one of the guys who uh, who's come back to Youth Voices, by the way, um, Woody Woodgate, is teaching in St. Mary's, Alaska, and I just got a note from him. I asked him, um, are your students coming on Youth Voices yet? And he said that they were out on a moose hunt this week, and they got seven moose, and they're, they're, they can't wait to tell us about it. So that's, a <laughs> oh, I'm that's the best plug ever. Oh. That's <laughs> yeah, attractions, that man. <laughs> anyway. So I'm going to go eat dinner. All right, well, thank All you right, so guys. much, Paul. Sounds thank you. Good. Well, Thanks, thank Paul. You. Bye. Hi guys. So John, right, what are Jeff? we talking about next week? I don't know. What are we talking about next week, Jeff? Jen, I, hey, I Dave. came up with it this week. Let's Jen's turn. Did. And Jen, no, did did constructive learning didn't? first week. Yeah, yeah, I did the first week. How about if we need to stop Jeff from bouncing on that ball? <laughs> oh, I <laughs> this is my new squeak. <laughs> What? I don't know. Let's let's see how Monday turns out. Maybe Monday we'll have something to talk about. I don't uh -oh. know. It, it, I that's know. okay with me. I don't know if we're breaking rules. Someone said one of the new rules is we have to have a topic. Oh, we week can't week. leave the show? We oh, can't maybe leave. I, I maybe said that. Um, yeah. We can talk about iPads. But we do change rules every week, so we can... Yeah, that actually might be interesting to talk about. Not, could we have to leave it at iPads? How about... Mobile devices. Isn't our first week mobile devices in blah, 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 and on the MOOC? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or we could just do tablets. Tablets. What? Tablets or mobile devices, whichever, um, and their use. Super the phone. phone. Dave, are you tired or bored or both? Oh, I'm tired. I, okay. I spent all day Friday labor. with a chainsaw, and the last two days building a deck, I'm worn out. Mm-hmm. I saw the pictures he did. All right, well, on that note, I think we have a topic. We've got a topic. Flat things you can do tech stuff on. Yep. <laughs> Jeff's had his course. coffee today. Awesome. I, I've had my eyes. coffee. I have to start my day. i got a big week ahead starting an online I got a big week ahead of my coffee. <laughs> but I, I need some more. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bounce, 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 bounce. As always, a pleasure, right, my Tech Weekly people. Ta-ta. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.